next few presentations are going to be about object-oriented programming. Um, the next course that you take, if you take the second semester programming class, it will be largely focused on object-oriented programming, and it's one of the paradigms of programming that is prevalent today, and it has a lot of power and flexibility for you as a programmer. So we're going to just introduce the concepts now, and you'll be working with it more next semester. Okay, so the idea behind object-oriented programming is that you as the programmer are able to define objects and give them characteristics or attributes and methods or procedures that act on those. And then a user who's using your class in a program can interact with that object and use it. You guys use objects all the time. Every time you declare an int, int x, that's an integer object. And you can do certain things with an integer. You can add them, you can subtract them, you can use um, a variable to stand for them, you can use cin and cout to input and output the values. So there are lots of things you can do with the integer object in integer class. And you as the programmer don't need to necessarily understand how it does what it does in the background, like how it goes about adding two numbers together, but all you have to know is that you can use a plus sign with it and an equal sign and so on. And so the, in object-oriented programming, what you're able to do is to divide, define your own objects so that you're able to use things like int or double or char or string or whatever that you are going to define for use in specific situations. Oops, too far. Okay, so object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm. It's um, an approach to programming that has rules and um, strategies for how to use it. Um, when you use object-oriented programming, you, you will be defining objects, which we also refer to as classes. Um, and as I mentioned, those classes will have attributes and they'll have methods or functions that you can use with them. The attributes will be usually um, variables that are a part of that class. Um, every time you use the class, like for integer, if you declare an int x, you're creating an instance of an integer. Well, the same thing is with the objects of the classes that you create. You'll be declaring objects of that type. Uh, some of the popular programming languages are C++, Objective-C, C Sharp, Java, Python, Ruby, and PHP. There are many, many, many more object-oriented languages. Once you've understood and learned how to use object-oriented language, it's easy to adapt it to the different programming languages. Okay, so here we have an example of an object. Let's say you're going to create an, a class that's called a car. And once you've created that car, you could create, use that class to declare several different kinds of cars. Uh, the car, a polo, a mini, a beetle, whatever you wanted. Um, it's the, the definition that you give to car that will determine what these different objects can do, these different instances of the object. Right? Each of these would be a dis different instance. And so you as the programmer are going to be, well, actually you're going to be playing sort of two roles. You're going to be designing a class and making the rules about how it works and writing the functions that make it work. And then you'll also be kind of wearing another hat that's going to be the programmer who's using that class in an actual program. Okay. Um, so I keep saying class, and basically a class is a way of defining this object that you're trying to create in a programming language. Right? So sometimes the, the term class and object are used interchangeably, but class is specifically how it's written in the programming language to create an object that has been defined. Okay? Um, there are three things that you'll you'll create every time you create a class. You'll have a name for the class. In this case, we'd have a car. Um, you'll have attributes, which are the characteristics. So like um, what, how much fuel it has, what's the maximum speed, what's the current speed, how many passengers does it take. Um, it, that Anything that would be considered a characteristic of a car would be a, an attribute. And then what can a car do? Well, 
you can f get the fuel. How much fuel is there? You can set the speed. You can drive the car. You could beep the horn. You could uh, whatever it is you can do with a car. Those would be the methods. Right? So you'll be defining all three things. You'll be defining the name, the attributes, and the methods. Um, some other concepts that I just want to mention in terms of object-oriented programming as you go on uh, again next semester, you'll be talking about these more. Um, object-oriented programming is used to create a level of abstraction. When we talk about abstraction in programming, uh, you know, in a programming environment, we're talking about taking some real-world concept like a car and breaking it down into the elements that are necessary for it to run, either the components, which would be your attributes, and then the actions, which would be the different elements here, or the essential elements. And to, to sort of make this idea of abstraction a little clearer, when you drive your car, for most of us, I should say, well, at least, well, let me say for me, when I drive my car, I know that when I want to slow down, I have to push, put my foot on the brake and push. Well, I don't have any idea what's going on in the engine or in the drive shaft or in the brake mechanisms. I have no clue. You know, I, I suppose I have kind of an idea, but I really don't know anything about the specifics of it. But I don't need to. That's that level of abstraction. All I need to know is how to use it. I don't need to know how it works. If I'm a mechanic, sure, then I would need to. But as a driver, I don't. So that level of abstraction allows me the freedom to just stop my car without even having to think about what's going on in the background. Another concept um, that it comes up with object-oriented programming is the idea of encapsulation. Basically, encapsulation is a way of protecting this class that you've created um, by putting the, um, the variables or those attributes in a part of the program that uh, protects them, that prevents just casual programmers or someone else just using the class that I've created, pr prevents them from messing with the data in essence. And you'll see how this works as you start as we start programming a little bit. Um, so encapsulation allows you to really control what's going on with your class and not leaving anything open to either misinterpretation or misuse. Inheritance is another um, sort of tool you can use with object-oriented programming. Um, inheritance allows you to sort of layer different characteristics. For example, and I have here this little example, if we could say that we declare a vehicle class and every vehicle takes fuel and every vehicle has some number of axles and every vehicle has a certain number of passengers. There are certain things that every vehicle has. They may have different numbers in those. You know, maybe your, your truck maybe has two passengers, whereas your minivan has seven passengers. Things like that, they may differ. But nonetheless, there are certain characteristics that all vehicles have. Well, you may want to be more specific, though, about a truck and a car. Maybe, for example, with a truck, you want to have whether it has four-wheel drive or not. I suppose we'll have to consider SUVs here in, as trucks in that regard then. Or maybe you would want to um, have keep track of the towing capacity or of the you know, characteristics of a truck that are different than a car. For a car, maybe you'd want to keep track of the miles per gallon. I don't know. Some of these things sort of re relate to all vehicles. But there may be some things about a car, like a sunroof. Okay, does the, the car have a sunroof or not? Not many trucks have sunroofs, but cars do. So maybe the sunroof could be an attribute of the car, but not of the truck. But both of these have the attributes of a vehicle. It's sort of like if you think about animals. You know, we have mammals, and mammals have certain characteristics. But some mammals live on water, some la mammals live on land. Um, maybe you would break it down then. You would have um, farm animals and pets or zoo animals you could or um, you could break it down by continent the the animals of Africa and so you could be more specific and break it up into sort of smaller classes and smaller classes and so that's the idea of inheritance being able to um, relate different classes together and not be redundant not repeat 
um, data or procedures. Polymorphism is the idea that maybe you could write a function or have some kind of a characteristic that could be used with any class. For example, let's say we have a class that is shapes and then as inherited or as descendants, I guess, of the of the shape class, you could have a circle class and a rectangle class and um, an, a star class or different shapes. Well, then maybe you could have a draw function that could be used with any of those. You could use this, the draw function to draw, draw a circle or to draw a star or to draw a square, rectangle, whatever shape you want. Well, the idea is there one function is being used in different classes, and that's the idea of polymorphism. Okay, so again, you'll be getting into more of this as you go on in programming. We're just kind of touching on the surface of it this semester. Some of the advantages of object-oriented programming, it allows you to create objects that can be reused over and over again, like ints, like double. You use, use those over and over again. Um, object-oriented programming allows you to create a, a kind of a, a well, hmm. It allows you to create an object that's easy to understand, like a vehicle, all right, so, or a car, you know, you, and it makes sense. Rather than just having a bunch of variable names listed and a bunch of uh, functions, um, you can sort of group those together into different classes that then the attributes and the procedures relate specifically to that particular class and it just makes it easy to understand kind of what's going on. Um, it, classes are easy to maintain and if you have created objects it's easy to maintain those. Imagine that you're writing a, a game and in that game you have many different kinds of um, let's say spaceships and you have your transport spaceships and your fighting spaceships and passenger spaceships and so on. Well, for all those, maybe there may be hundreds or thousands of those objects of, of spaceships that you have in your program, in your game that you're playing, it's so much easier to change any little thing or to redesign it or to make a new kind of spaceship based on an old. All of those things are much, much easier if you use object-oriented programming. Um, possible disadvantages are that sometimes <laughs> you might create an object where it really doesn't necessarily make sense um, it, and so it may seem kind of artificial. Um, it doesn't hurt to do it but sometimes it just especially when you're working on exercises for a class it just sort of seems kind of like um, making classes just for the sake of making classes not really accomplishing anything um, outstanding or particularly efficient by doing it. Um, when you write object-oriented programming, you really need to understand what's going on and how it works. So the design and the planning and the knowledge of the actual methodology of, an, of that paradigm of object-oriented programming, you really need to be knowledgeable about it to be able to be effective in using object-oriented programming. It's not difficult and it's not complicated. Um, it's just sort of thinking about things in a little bit different way. And in the next presentation, you'll see some examples of that. Of course, ask questions.